Hey guys, Twisted Maxi here. Today we're going to be going over Better Exceptions. It's a mod that I actually started a long time ago and did a video on right after the initial release. Um, unfortunately, the direction I took Better Exceptions went completely different from the way I expected it to. So that video isn't really relevant anymore. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a follow-up video that explains how Better Exceptions works as it is today. I want to start by talking about BE's newest feature. Any simmer that uses mods knows the most dreaded day is patch day. Because if you're using mods, you can pretty much guarantee that some of them are going to break when that new sims patch hits. Unfortunately, it's not always clear which mod broke, and sometimes it won't be obvious that there's even an issue until you're well into your save. Better Exceptions aims to fill that gap with what I call the patch day scanner. You can see we've loaded into our game, and Better Exceptions has given us a message saying the game version looks newer than the last time BE was ran. You'll have the option to run a patch day report, which we will, and you can see well within a few minutes it shows us a report. To be absolutely clear, this is not an exception report. This is a proactive report that lets you remove potentially high-risk mods before they cause an exception. You can always skip the report if you'd like, if there is a definite issue, that will be caught by BE later on. The way this report is created is by comparing the current game's template with the mods template. If they don't match, there's a decent chance that the listed mods may cause exceptions or other issues, but it does not mean that they definitely will. Let's say you've just installed a new game update and turned mods back on without knowing if everything's working. I don't exactly recommend that but this report will allow you to preemptively remove incompatible mods or know where to start should an exception occur. As you'll note in the report, I've put plenty of emphasis that no one should consider a mod as definitely broken or ask modders for an update based solely on this report. This report is for you and you only. If this is your first time using the patch day report, the list may seem overwhelming, but many times multiple items on the list are actually part of a single mod in which case you can remove the entire folder for that mod to resolve everything. The patch day report will always have a teal colored header to easily distinguish it from an actual exception report. If you're a modder and find your mod on these reports, I recommend using them to correct your tuning templates. Additionally, tuning error notifier is also a great modder tool to ensure your tuning is correct. Okay, so let's move on to when a mod is definitely broken. If you aren't aware, when The Sims 4 encounters a problem it can't resolve, the game spits out a text document called lastexceptions.txt. You can find those in your TS4 folder, but you won't know when they occur unless you actively look for them, and they're not particularly helpful for the average player. Usually players have to reach out to volunteer helpers to see if they can locate the problem, and depending on your luck you may end up 50 50 in your mods folder anyway, which is basically narrowing down the cause by a lot of trial and error. The point of better exceptions is to make that scenario much less likely. More often than not, exceptions are caused by outdated or broken mods, and better exceptions can tell you exactly what mod files are broken in many cases. I can't say it will 100% of the time because there's so many variables involved, but I'm fairly confident when I say it's down in the 90% range. Let's take a look at how that happens in-game. While this is loading, let me point out that better exceptions will only ever generate a report on the first exception per gameplay. My philosophy there is that any exception after the first may be a direct result of it, and so we should disregard those and focus only on the first. I definitely recommend stopping your game as soon as an exception occurs and fixing your issue. It's not always clear how fatal an exception is, and if you continue playing, you may regret it later on in your save. Firstly, a good portion of exceptions that aren't mod related are caused by animation errors. These are usually harmless errors that happen when a sim tries to walk to an object in a crowded area, such as somewhere that the move object's cheat was used. Since these are typically ignorable, we don't want to bother you with a BE report unless you really want one, so instead you'll now see a notification that just lets you know it was an animation error and you can ignore it, or if it keeps happening, try moving some objects around. If you'd still like a report though, you can click the button to do so. So now I've loaded up The Sims 4 with some mods that I know are broken. We're just going to pop into a household and see what happens. Okay, so you can see we've received an exception and Better Exceptions is scanning. The scan can take a few minutes if you're using an older hard drive or have an excessive amount of CC, but it will still save you plenty of time troubleshooting if it successfully finds the problematic mod. 
Once the scan is finished, you'll receive this report pop up with a brief summary of the error and an option to view the full report. We're going to go ahead and open the report. It'll open in your default browser. And side note, if you're using the new version of Microsoft's Edge browser, it has a bug that prevents auto opening local HTML files. I recommend using an alternative browser for the best experience. Before we go over the report, let's set it aside for a minute. Some of you may know that really bad exceptions can even prevent households from loading at all. If that happens, BE can still generate a report. Upon failure to load the household, your browser will open the screen we're looking at now, and it will load the report when it's finished scanning. Once the report opens, you'll notice it has the BE version at the top. Better Exceptions has an auto updater that will keep BE up to date in most cases. We'll talk about that more later in the video. There is also a Google Translate option that allows the report to be read in different locales. In the summary section, you'll see exception date, which is the date and time the exception occurred. The game version is, of course, the version of your Sims install. And then you'll see category ID, which, if you think of the game as a large company with different departments, tells you which department encountered the issue. Below that is the reason, which is basically a brief explanation of the exception. It's what's found in those regular last exception files, and won't be that helpful for most simmers. The summary will also include the MC Command Center version, and if Wicked Whims is installed, an additional version field will be displayed for it as well. If either one is out of date, it will tell you so there. Now, here's the important part. You'll see a recommended action and possible cause section. The confidence percentage indicates how likely the mod is to be the actual problem. If BE's package tracker did its job, the confidence will be at 90% or higher, and you'll have a message like this one. It will tell you which particular mod caused this exception, but it will also advise you to check the broken mod section below to see a full list of misbehaving mods. Let's take a look at that now. When there are bad mods found, this section will be expanded by default, and have every bad mod listed and a reason why. We'll go over each category, but essentially every mod listed here should be updated to a working version if available, otherwise it should be removed. Invalid tuning mods can be any package mod, from gameplay tweaks to objects with custom behaviors. Invalid script mods are any TS4 script file that's outdated, does not load properly, or is corrupted. The responsible package or script file will be listed for each. If it's from a multi-part mod, you should remove the entire mod and grab an updated copy if available, otherwise the mod will need to remain deleted. Duplicate mods mean you've installed the same file more than once. You can fix this by deleting the one in the duplicate path column, but personally I recommend deleting both copies and getting a fresh one to make sure you're up to date. Invalid Object CC Have you ever went to place an object in build by and it just disappears? Most, if not all of those cases would be caught by BE and listed here, telling you exactly which package file that object came from. Again, this object should be updated or removed. Finally, we have the junk files category. This is usually going to be a .py or .zip file that shouldn't exist in your mods directory. .py files are what make up a script mod, and their presence in your mods folder usually means a script was unzipped by accident at some point, while .zip files typically indicate you're downloading mods directly to your mods folder and not deleting them after installing, or you grabbed a very old script mod. I heavily recommend downloading mods outside of your mods folder, and then moving them into mods following whatever directions the creator provided. Alright, but let's say you're unlucky and there isn't anything in the broken mod section. There's two possibilities. BE failed to track that particular exception, or the exception was not caused by a mod but instead by a game bug. You can test the latter by disabling mods and seeing if the exception still occurs. If you're confident it's a mod issue, there's still some ways BE helps out. Below the broken mod section, you'll find more info like missing packs, last interaction, active sims traits, and so on. These sections aren't really meant for you and they don't guarantee any mods listed in them are the issue. Instead, they're there to provide a better picture for helpers. If you jump down to help and resources, there's links to my Discord as well as MC Command Center's Discord. If you haven't heard already, the MC Command Center Discord has built a reputation of offering top tier tech support for the Sims 4 community. They have tons of volunteers who put a surprising amount of effort into getting players' games back up and running. Should you find yourself with a BE report you don't understand, please don't hesitate to reach out on either Discord and we'll be glad to help. On the other hand, are you a helper? If you aren't, you can skip to the next chapter. I'll briefly go over each section. Missing packs naturally lists any packs that aren't installed in their game. 
Last interaction will typically be blank, but if not, then it means the exception occurred during gameplay and not while initially loading the game or household. It will have the last interaction to run before the exception. Active Sims Traits has all traits on the Sim. Yes, this list can be very long in some cases. It is correct, it just means the Simmer has a lot of trait mods or gameplay mods that utilize traits. Mods explicitly mention an exception is a low accuracy attempt at finding the problematic mod. It will only help if the cause wasn't a script mod, and even then I would put the chance of a mod in this section actually being responsible in the 30% range. Because of how script mods hook into the game, tons of scripts can be in the exception stack without actually being the problem. All loaded script mods and all package mods are for your information. Suspect a simmer has a known broken mod? You can confirm it by checking these lists. Recent tuning log shows minor tuning errors. Technically this means the mods aren't designed correctly, but usually aren't game breaking. Sometimes an exception can result from a minor issue earlier on, so these logs may tip you off to the actual cause. Formatted last exception provides a pretty print version of the exception text. Exception attributes is a list of variables that might tip you off to what mod caused it. Usually if something useful were to be found here, BE would have already tracked it to a mod automatically, but it's here just in case. Raw last exception is the exception as it would have been found in the last exception.txt. This is only the first exception per game session, but if you want to view all the exceptions up to the moment of report creation, you can click the open full raw exception button and you'll get a text copy. As I mentioned, Better Exceptions includes an auto updater. When it's active, it will alert you when you start your game if there's an update available. For some players, this feature may be offline. If it is, one thing you can try is right clicking the .ts4 script file and going to properties. If you see a checkbox that says this file came from another computer, check it and hit OK. That should resolve it for you. If it doesn't, it's probably blocked by a firewall or network settings. It's nothing to worry about, it just means you'll have to keep tabs on updates for better exceptions just as you do for all other mods. You can check the status of BE and its auto updater anytime you start the game by checking your notification wall. This will show you the scanner and updater status as well as what version you have installed. You can also open the BE menu, but I'll point out that normally you shouldn't need to use it. The menu allows you to manually trigger a patch day scan in case you skipped it and decided you want one after all, or you can trigger an example exception just to get a feel for what a real exception report would look like. Again, BE does its job automatically, so you really shouldn't be spending too much time on this menu. So there you have it, better exceptions as it exists today. If you watched the original video, you know just how wildly different BE is from its original release. One final reminder, a patch day report is a proactive report for your use only. It doesn't mean anything is definitely broken. An exception report means there's definitely a problem, and if needed, you're more than welcome to reach out for extra support. Many of the features mentioned in this video are currently part of a release candidate for patrons. It will be officially released to everyone on this upcoming Tuesday. This might not be as fun to talk about as gameplay mods, but I genuinely think this mod can be a great resource for players of any playstyle. If Better Exceptions has helped you personally, please consider subscribing here or joining me on Patreon. Patch updates for BE and all of my other mods are and always will be free, but the support is always appreciated. You can grab better exceptions and my other mods at twistedmexi.com. Thanks everyone, and I hope you have a good day.